how often, or even the Invoker as well, right? How often are you going to be seeing them use their control abilities? What, once per fight, probably? You'll get one blast off, one yeah. tornado EMP combo. You're definitely only getting one Ravage. Yeah. Unless you get Spirit, Refresher, if... smile. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Any of those abilities miss. They don't connect on core heroes, or heaven forbid, Spirit already have BKB. All of a sudden, the fight is near impossible to take because Spirit, they have so much low cooldown control other than Chrono. Yeah. Uh, right? The Tiny's going to be getting an array of spells off. What is this move from Spirit? Oh, they're going to go through the Twin Gates. Is that what's going on? Or they are expecting some sort of Twin Gates move? Maybe this is a read of some sort. I'm not really sure what's going on. Perhaps they are considering some lame swapping shenanigans. Uh, Maybe, yeah, just send Yatoro mid and <laughs> everyone else quadling top. Here, here it comes, dude. Get ready yeah. for it. This is what they needed this whole time. It's got to refresh their gameplay. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought in the close qualifiers, they backs against the wall, they pull out their secret strat of, uh, yeah, okay, well, bullshit aside, might see some level 1 shenanigans here because level 1 spells from Spirit are pretty decent. You get the Onslaught of the Trample out and... A lash stun, not that you really want to level that early on, but I just see them posture aggressively to scare Night Pulse away. Should at the very least be a two for two. Yep, Spirit are able to actually get three for one. So Beautiful. sometimes uh, bluffing just works. You 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 aggro up, you square up, you say, hey, want to fight? And uh, turns out Night Pulse, they absolutely do not want to. Lifestealer is not the best level one hero, believe no, it or not. So no, uh, he doesn't really provide anything. That's tough. Uh, Enchantress, same as well, right? Unless you get the enchant off and you've got oodles of damage, doesn't really do much. Same thing with Invoker. So the level yeah. one spells, Nightpaws, I get why they're so weary. Right? Yeah. I understand why those bounty runes go three for one. It, it makes sense. Master tier on both the Ench as well as the Tidehunter. No surprises, we already mentioned. They are specialties, siggies, if you will. But I uh, gotta give a nod to Mr. Yatoro and his army sticker, Golden, on his faceless void. He's blinged out, so this guy, uh, he's got the drip, that's for sure. My favorite 2024 Dota development is the bromance between Yatoro and Ame. I love how you say it's it, 2024 as if it, it was just kept on the wraps, you know, they, they it was, launched it, it recently, that's all. Yes, uh, prior yeah. to that, it was just like in, in Steam messages or maybe private discords and stuff, you know, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they quietly calling each other, they roughly understand each other, Kami's gonna be able to draw the first blood, just standing his ground and auto-attacking, I respect it, dude, like he realizes yeah. that him running away is just gonna give Mira a free kill. So he just trades out as much as he can. Either way, great trade, right? Because you get that EXP and gold. Yeah, Collapse gets none of it. Collapse is going to continue to be sad in this lane until he gets Onslaught and can just fully run away from this Lifestealer. Yeah. I'm kind of double waving him right now. So if he even wants to sort of come back, get any last hit, you know Kami's clocking a couple of auto attacks on his head. That's always yeah. going to be so annoying. And against these like high health heroes like primal life stealer is so good like it feels so good at every part of the lane yeah. and how do you gank life stealer right with a lash maybe but with a void definitely right? and that's usually the question that i ask myself looking at life stealer drafts or troll warlords how do you gank mira dropping low yeah nice setup there from janta with the slowdown he has to try and tp out no. but last touch yeah a bit too late on that move and he's gonna pay the price Already, this Janta Kami duo is kind of putting a number onto this spirit offlane, and it's concerning because we already mentioned how impactful Collapse is as a hero. And uh, clearly, you know, the email is uh, sent with high importance because as long as you screw over Collapse, it seems, you're gonna be fine. They've done everything to force him on this primal beast pick that doesn't really feel comfortable. With how fast they snap pick the Lifestealer, it almost felt like they expected it, and it's going yeah. all according to plan for Night Pulse right now. And this is where I really would have liked to see. Now, obviously, Team Spirit shouldn't have, or should have maybe had an inkling about this life stealer, but realistically had no idea, right? You can't just completely predict someone's draft, but this is where I really would have liked to see maybe a Razor for Collapse. Mm. He's been practicing in his pubs. Like, the most practiced hero in his pubs is Razor. Yeah. So, uh, and it would have gone very differently. It's a good laning combo with the Tiny as well. 
Yeah, I but don't know, sneeze. no, but this, I get it. This I get it. Beast isn't hitting it for me. Quite nah, it, it, look, look, look. It'll hit later on, and the idea yes, is very yes. simple, right? Because you know, lane matchup, shite. Yes. Game matchup, you need someone to sort of initiate and get things going. Because Lord knows the lash isn't. You know, if your your lash needs to build a blink, you're you're in a load of trouble. <laughs> especially if he's the guy yeah. supposed to propel your early game. So I get that. It, it's a tough choice. It's one they had to make though. And uh, Lal already doing pretty decently in this mid lane to be expected though with those buffs to the Lightning Storm. It's just very easy for you, for you to operate in the mid lane. Lash is my least favorite hero to be meta. It is just so awful to play against a Lash. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's just like oodles of damage. Like It's the same reason that people are hating Hoodwink. Right, one ability just does so much damage even in the lane. It's just awful. To lane against, to play against, it feels so bad. I don't even... The, the funniest part about this, and I guess it's a testament to why you're saying it, is I don't even know which spell you're talking about. You could be talking about uh, yeah, all of them, Diabolic all of Edict them, or yeah. Lightning Storm. Both of which do... Uh, I'm talking about both and neither at the same time. That's like... crazy. He's going abstract with his casting. He's not being direct <laughs> with his points. Uh, Night Pulse, they... Uh, Pretty happy with this situation, I'm sure, and can't help but feel like Warwick, as soon as he picks up that urn, or maybe even waiting until the vessel, is gonna start getting moving on the map. And Team Spirit, it kind of feels like they need to ride this Lal Pony train to, to success, in a way. If not, yes. their map is gonna close out real quick. Man, I, this is, change to Ghost Walk was everything Invoker needed. Friggin' free royal jelly in lane might as well be a salve. It's the only thing keeping him up against Laurel. Yeah. You just uh, see him casually pop into Ghost Walk. Uh, we're in 2024, ladies and gentlemen. It's not because he's trying to set up a gank. He's just trying to get free fountain level regen, which is what that spell does now. Pretty insane. I mean, unless you die, you really never have to go back to base on this Invoker. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Especially when you're building Brace or Urn. Your survivability is very high in lane. I guess the, as Lal has to do a little walk back to base, I guess the upside is that, you know, Spirit hasn't really lost anything just yet, but they might start to set up at this 6 minute mark, looking for the push, capitalizing on the catapult wave, but Janta gets caught out. Great catch from Mira to spot out the techies and get them the number advantage in this mid lane. Now, the, go for the 50-50. Lucky on Lal will get that arcane rune for himself. Very nice little pickups there for Spirit to salvage the mid lane a little bit. Yeah, th that's tiny specialty. I feel like salvaging lanes mm -hmm. kind of runs okay. it. Re whether it be like a, a three tiny with the early blink dagger or the support tiny with mid rotations, yeah. that is like tiny's claim to fame. Fame is like just fixing stuff for your yeah. team. Uh, if Bob, little do you know this, but if you ever have a problem in your house, if Bob can't do it, Tiny's next on the list. He's right yes. there uh, in terms of the top yeah. plumbers in gaming, right next to Mario and Luigi, I believe. So, mm. you know, that's something uh, that needs fixing. Um, yeah. Don't call Bob. That guy's gonna scam me for your money, I heard. His, his uh, Google reviews have hit the drain recently. Oh, really? And, and by hit the drain, I don't mean he's fixing it. I mean he is ruining oh. everything. That's and, unfortunate. Yeah. Seven minute mark should just be an even. Things. Yeah, true. Uh, he's doing more of the former than the latter, which is undesirable uh, from a professional. Wisdom runes traded out. No uh, insane EXP disparity of any sort. But it's clear that from the net worth, it's uh, the team spirit calls that are struggling a little bit here. It feels like they need to cross their fingers, hope for this laning stage to come to an end, and maybe start shaking things up to get action happening on the map and really. Flip the switch on this situation. I mean, Life Sailor makes this so that the laning stage never ends, so I'm not sure what Collapse is going to be doing here. Yeah. Maybe got a kill onto Janter, yeah. but he's super low. I mean, this is kind of what they've been doing the entire time and what they're forced to. It's a similar thing to laning against Undying. It's set up in the mid lane. Lao gets cold snapped out, but is able to trot his way out of trouble. Um, wouldn't want to get caught by a whirlwind there. You know where horses don't belong in the sky or, or blown by the wind? That's uh. Could have fooled me. Yeah. I, I uh, no idea on that one. A minute rune gonna spawn tall, but already burning away all of Lao's mana. He kept that arcane boots just for it, and beautiful avalanche from Mira to set up for that kill. Now Merlin, he's already Yotaro. snagged away that haste rune, but Yotaro coming into the mid lane at that level six mark, 
We'll try and focus down, focus down Warwick with the chain stun onto him as well. They have that dust prepared, but the Ravage comes in clutch. Vazia able to clean up onto Lao, and this Tidehunter showing up big time. Warwick does get tossed down though. Mira had a little creep next to him and makes it work. So trading out one for one for the mid lane, but overall with Night Pulse losing their techies as well in that situation. Pretty good uh, early rotation from Yatoro. So what he's known for, I am very much not surprised about that rotation. I kind of felt like I saw it coming a mile away. As soon yeah. as you get that level 6 on Void, as soon as you can use it. Now Vazia, a great rotation as well, right? recognizing, hey, my team needs me. Uh, the bat signal has been shone, and mm -hmm. off I go. Yeah. I, dude, honestly, I think as a tight, you're always thinking about what are the opportunities to use your Ravage. But it's yes. rare that we ever see it executed so cleanly. Lao, they don't want to relent on the pressure. Still running at him with Merlin, still stomping him down. Sent on Pony Massacre here. As Lao going to go down again. Very, very unlucky stuff. As it, It's just, you just come back into the lane. This Lash is supposed to be the tip of your spear in terms of tiding you through the early game. And Night Pulse, their focus is intact, right? They know who they have to shut down. Yeah, because Collapse, he's been shut down already. Yeah. But now at the level yeah. 6, we can start seeing things go Collapse's way. But uh, until then, until we start seeing Collapse make movements, it's going to be rough. There's no stacks for him to recover either. So it is uh, it, rough. It's rough to say the least. Yeah. Uh, how rough is it? Let's get 1 to 10, you think? Uh, like, like, on a, like a dog level rough. Okay. Like a... <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not going to continue dog piling on this uh, <laughs> analogy. Kami's shown up here in this mid lane as well, so you can tell Night Pulse they have a very clear focus, and that's at mid lane tower. They've essentially parked Merlin here for the past 3-4 minutes already, and they aren't going anywhere. I think uh, they're capitalizing on the fact that Lal is a bit too scared to show his face here anymore because he knows their numbers. And yeah, he's just tucked all the way back here. Spirit adopting a very, very scared stance here as they realize that they can't just face up into Night Pulse at this stage. That's... You know, Urna Shadow's now online for Invoker. Merlin's going for the absolute Chad build, the Aghanim Scepter on Enchantress. Dude, Vazia is two levels ahead of Yatoro yeah. right now. Holy. Mage Slayer already on the on the tim uh, Timber Saw. Hello, Tidehunter. This is Yikes. nasty uh, work. Yeah. see Vlad's first, but no need, right? Mage Slayer is so good this game. Every single hero, except for Chen, every single hero does spell damage in one way or another. This is such a good pickup. Yeah, I mean, if you anchor smash his creeps, their spell damage gets reduced as well. True. Take True. that, Harpy Stormcrafter, you damn yeah. idiot. <laughs> and he has it all mapped out. Uh, but Team Spirit, they're trying to return the issue here. At least put some pressure on with the Chen creeps and collapse in this bot side. But again, the only reason why the Life Stealer is playing so far back is because he knows numbers are not on his side. But realistically, the amount of tower damage that is being done is nothing too crazy. He, I mean, if, even if they try and dive him, you can just infest the creep and like buy time for his TP in Ravage to respawn. We saw this the yeah. previous game that we cast as well, right? It's just such a shutout because you mentioned already, how do you gank this lifestealer? Even if you full ham onto him, bullet train forward, try and force the issue, the counter initiation from Night Pulse is insane, dude. It's very strong. And a lot of it is like, not just the techies, but a lot of it is the techies, right? Techies set up for an invoker rotation, a tide rotation. They don't even need to be present. They just need to come in eventually. Yeah, it's just so scary because I feel like everything that Team Spirit were preparing up to do up till this point, you saw the stacks that were set up for Lal in that jungle. They had it watered, Night Pulse bringing Merlin in to try and steal those away, successful in doing so, kill off Lal twice take their mid tower, pressure them in their triangle. Right now, there's four heroes grouped up around here farming the only stack they've really managed to get their hands on this whole game. It's been a rough build up and Vazia, he's the man on top right now. This Tidehunter is everything for them. And I can't help but feel like shit's really gonna hit the fan once he gets that Ravage blink. And he's very, very close to no levels into Gush, which I'm not too surprised about. Here comes the Ravage teeping bottom. They want it. They want yeah. it bad, dude. They see members here collapse. Tried for a go, pulverizing up on Takami, but immediate response comes out means that Spirit, they need to evacuate. They can no longer yeah. fight here, especially not when the Ravage is still up. I don't think this Tidehunter dies at this point. Lesh yeah. needs to full, full commit on the Tide, and oh, Lesh is doing a little bit of dying. Yeah, 
Gets a full commit on by Kami, who is taking a lot of damage from the Edict. Yeah, gotta watch yourself on the toggles there, homie. But, uh, good stuff. I think, uh, baited in by Janta and probably just a blast off from the side of the lane there. Wasn't really expecting it. And you can't really blame Lao for that situation, right? Because he just needs to put on as much pressure on the map as possible. He sees four heroes seemingly bought. Of course he has to go for that tower, but it's just, you know, what do you even do? Just great response from Night Pulse. Now they're setting up the collapse. Pass is tier 2. It's a really deep rotation. Trying to toss back onto Bazia. You mentioned that the Time Hunter might not die here, but with the power rides, he still turns around. Ravish! Oh my god, is he gonna try and kill Collapse? Gets him with the gush. <laughs> At least makes him work for it, and he is, uh... Not really taking a lot of damage, but when you commit the Chrono Poem and the full force of the Leshrac TPing back in, they finally get him down. So really nicely stuff and much needed kill for Spirit, even though they end up trading their own offlaner for it. Yeah, the uh, e a second email for the, the Screw Collapse fan club has been uh, sent out. Yeah. And they are they are saying, screw him in lane. Screw yeah. him in draft, screw him in lane. I mean, Collapse definitely not really the showing that we've come to expect from this player, but Radiant as we know, Spirit, they haven't really been close to uh, the form that we generally expect, but still some signs of life here, right? I think, you know, there's, there's always that insurance policy in terms of the Faces Void that you already mentioned. It's, uh, I mean, take a look at the levels as well. It's just Vazia and Kami on top. It's just a testament to how well they split the map. A curious little thing is that the Invoker is actually only level 8, which uh, is just funny because <laughs> Miposhka is eclipsing him a bit. Yes. I don't really know yeah. how that happens. Yeah, the, the Invoker's kind of fallen off a little bit you know we saw the early urn looking for the vessel but not a lot of things have happened recently he needs to die uh and get a charge for himself there as a strat mira with a blink reveal catches onto janta great stun follow-up lal able to capitalize on that move from mira as again warwick will just have to watch his ally pass on it's uh Starting to get scary here because there's a Hand of God always available for Miposhka, which of course he's just used it, but you get my point. It's, you know, it's not so easy to just go in and burst someone down. The Invoker no longer quite as monstrous. Probably just has to rely on Vazia to pave the way for him to get some more of these kills. That's exactly it, right? Sit Tidehunter in front and hopefully Invoker gets more than one array of spells off. Yeah. Uh, interesting little smoke up here. Uh, they don't have Ravage for another 30, but they want to get things going here. Maybe catching Spirit on an off timing. Specifically a Toro. He's been great at sniffing out these kind of moves in the past, but Warwick getting the advance on him. It's going to burst out in an instant. Delivered onto the Maelstrom. He's able to time walk into the trees. The bomb on his heels as a try and chase forward. Blast off off the mark. Even though Yotaro has no mana, he's just able to get his way out of there. A very awkward situation for Night Pulse. There's now Merlin being set up on in the mid lane. Kami with the TP in. Should be able to safeguard his Enchantress. And Mira, Hand of God, narrowly keeps him alive Beautiful. there. Perfect play there. Spirit fishing out their contenders from trouble. It's one of those thank God moments. You know, literally, literally thank God. Yeah. They gotta, when the Hand of God comes down and blesses you, you gotta dap it up a little bit. You know, Give it a little fist bump. Yeah. A thanks is just he's not enough. Uh, yeah, and he's gonna die. Uh, not, not really sure what that was about, but I guess his assumption, much like Lao, uh, was that, oh, look, heroes are rotating to the mid lane. Surely they can't all still be down here. Well, news flash, yeah. Night Pulse, uh, they're right there. And Vazia still chasing down. He's just feeling so confident right now. Dead in the water, picked up very early. But Collapse, winding up a goal, trying to focus down the Invoker. They've got the advanced backline jump, and Warwick goes down. BKB reveal from Collapse. Great move, and the toss back now. Vazia in a little bit of trouble. He has that Kraken shell, and the Mage Slayer should be able to reduce what Lao is pumping out. But Merlin can't really stop this situation. Collapse winding up the charge again. And Night Pulse, they're starting to bleed out members here. A Pulverize makes up for a third. And this should be Spirit cleaning up big time. Huge set of moves from this four-man unit. They get it done. And look at all the abilities that Team Spirit were able to get off in that fight. Right, Night Pulse, they used most of it on the Void bottom. So Invoker comes in, he gets the tornado off. Cool, that's it. See you later. Yeah. Tide Under Ravage has been used. Like uh, The resources were very low on Night Pulse. And Spirit, they just got more gas in the tank with that BKB reveal for Collapse. Yeah. A beautiful BKB timing despite having a really awful time this game. 
Yeah, and I think it's just, it's so smart, right? Because Spirit, that's exactly what you need to do. Night Pulse, they have a very front-to-back lineup, but if you can cut through the noise, jump the Invoker, jump the Techies, jump the Backliners, ignore Vazel for later, that's what's going to get you success. That Tide Hunter Ravage does nothing if he doesn't have the follow-up damage, and Kami's not really joining the fights for now, so Spirit, they're capitalizing on what they need to do. 3k gold lead up now, but it does feel like you need to do that once or twice more before you really feel yeah. firmly in the lead. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about Void Farming is that at the end of the day, he's going to take over the Life Sealer if he gets him in Chrono and kills him. Running up to the high ground, BKB popped again, collapsed, looking again for the backliner. Mira able to buy himself some time with that toss, but will end up going down, traded up for Merlin. Position 4 for position 4, and not the BKB anymore. Looks like collapse will be next for the picking. And of God actually gets committed. That is... Curious, I, I guess they were trying to buy enough time for the onslaught to come out, but to no avail. Night Pulse, they keep the pressure on. Oh, collapse. The emails keep getting sent. The, <laughs> the fan club is in uh, shambles right now. Yeah. Well, not shambles, the opposite of shambles. Rejoice. Uh, like, like, are you talking about the emotion or like... Sure, yeah. Uh, the fan club is... Uh... Wait, you're looking at the opposite of... Yeah, of shambles. You're not talking about the Collapse Fan Club, you're talking about the Collapse Hater Club. True, true. Yeah. Quote unquote fan club. The, the fan club the fan club is in shambles, the hater club is living. Yes, the, the, yeah, the hater screw. club is lit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're turning out, they're popping the third bottle of champagne for the night. They're like, yeah, screw this guy. Um All things considered, I'm I, I won't lie, the BKB reveal kind of surprised me as well. I didn't realize he had picked that up and rushed yeah. that. Um, and the Ench now going for an Aghanim Scepter. It's Ooh. coming out. It's coming out, baby. Ooh. I'm so excited to see this. Oh, this is the this perfect is game to have sleeper. it too. Yeah, against the Chen. Because keep in mind, I think a lot of people don't realize that it roots. Yeah. Uh, per creeps around you. So yeah. Chen is constantly going to have creeps around him. Your team constantly going to be creeps. Like lane creeps count, Chen creeps count, jungle creeps count. All uh -oh. these things add up to a big old root. Spirit heading into the pit, but I believe Risky. it got scanned out. Yeah, yeah and Night Pulse, they, they, uh, it's, yeah, Sunstrike, they know for sure now, TPing in onto Vazia because they know he's the one target that they can't just make an easy burst situation of. Just gonna start walking up to the high ground with the help of his team. Kami runs into the mix, just gets chased enough. Oh, no. The poor life stealer is just gone a bit too far forward, and they paid the ultimate price for it. He got a one to Vazia. What are you supposed to be the advanced guard? The life stealer comes in a bit too soon. And now, Team Spirit, they can just continue searching for. We said they need to win one or two more fights. The Chrono committed just for the Invoker, because there's no one else to kill. I mean, Night Pulse, that was so close to working out in their favor, but the timing just a little bit off, and Spirit, they are firmly in the lead now. I don't know why Night Pulse didn't expect a hero to be standing at the gate. I feel like that is such a basic thing in Dota to do. Just I, maybe the respect, dude, like, I, how do no, you not respect right. Team Spirit? But, like, that was such a disrespectful play to just jump in, like, without raging as well. Like, you, you're gonna get instantly controlled. Yeah, I, I mean, look, realistically speaking, rage doesn't last as long as you're channeling sure. through the Twin Gate. So it's not like you can press it halfway, but you gotta sure. imagine that if, if you're expecting Spirit in that area, if you've already scanned, you know they're there, they've been doing the rush for a bit, the one thing they'll be keeping an eye out for is a potential contest from you, and you you TB in on Titan. I thought, I'm like, okay, Vazia's gonna walk up to high ground, he's gonna sort of give them the advance, and they're gonna come in right as he ravages them, it's gonna be perfect. Kind of jank up the pieces a little bit and team spirit this is a team that is characterized even in their form when it's a bit off you give them an inch you're never gonna see the rest of the yeah. track again they're gone zoom and in a blink of an eye a 10k gold lead up now spirit the supports are eclipsing this invoker not even by a little bit quite heavily yeah the net worth is very rough for this invoker this is a grand master invoker this is not the showing you expect from warwick yeah and i think it all comes down to the fact that he wasn't really able to get that spirit vessel engine running right we, we didn't see it yeah come to fruition at any stage was big bad vazia all over the place but key thing with heroes like the tide hunter you just uh do the thing where you pretend he doesn't exist and team spirit yeah. <laughs> at the point where they can make it so that he doesn't exist because uh, they have the damage now. Bloodstone complete for Lal with 
the Yules as well. Even though he went for that first, he's still able to double back for that high value item. And now Yatoro, I mean, especially with his BKB, just 300 gold away, he's more than ready to fight. Yeah, collapse. He's got a Sanjan Kaya too, so ready oh, to wrap fight around. on the Primal as well. Try for the wrap around, but they get caught out first. Merlin in some trouble, surrounded by the creeps, and just gonna get trampled down. Trying to go up to the high ground though. But Mira already has the setup onto Janta. Huge ravage, and in comes Kami. But is it gonna be enough damage? They're able to just work through the tiny for now, but they need to get the rest of these heroes. Pipochka starting to run away, but Janta finally gets worked down, and now Warwick in trouble as well. While you were so, so busy killing our supports. We killed your Volca. Uh, Grandmaster level 30, you know, just got a little Midas, ain't gonna do shit for you. And Team Spirit, again, able to hold their ground in the fight, and now without a Ravage, they can just keep barreling forward. This is a problem we run into a lot as Tidehunter, and I think this is one of the reasons he's been seeing less and less play, is unless your team has an overwhelming amount of damage, your Ravage means nothing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, even with the Ravage, it's not like they were insta-killing anyone. Like, Mira and Miposhka no. are tanky little boys, you know? They got their auras, yeah. they got their items, and... I mean, Yatoro didn't even use the Chrono. He still has yeah. that available. So you come back up, you try and defend the tower, you're gonna pay for it. Take a look at Spirit and how aggressively they're positioned now with the BKB on Yatoro as well. No blast off Ravaged Invoker spell shenanigans of yours will put a stop to this. And they will be able to take... This tier 2 tower with ease. Probably move towards the mid lane as well, just to try and really capitalize on this Ravage being down. Yeah, keep ramping up. Keep going, going, going. Mm -hmm. You know, despite Lifestealer being top net worth, it really doesn't feel like it. No. And and it's part of the issue with Lifestealer, right? Because even though he's a strong hero, you can't... Uh, it's not RTZ back in that one clip. It, you sure. can't 1v5. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got yeah. the SNY, it's going to help you resist a bit. But it's just a matter of can you kill them before they kill you? Especially if the Team Spirit calls are all still standing, the answer is no. Now Kami on the front lines, they've set up Vision, they see him, toss back into the mix. Can they get the chain stun? Holding him in place, the power rise, where's the save? Kami! Get him out of here, he's just able to infest. Trying to come out of the creep wave now, just desperately waddling away as the rest of the team. They can't really offer much up into this situation as well. They need to run away from Lal. And now Mira on the backside, setting up another kill. They will clean up Kami and Merlin to boot. The rest of the squad, Night Pulse, they just have nothing to offer. And again, Spirit just run over their opponents. I, I, just a chrono committed for the lifestealer because they understand yeah. he's just the most important person in the game. And 14k, the gold just keeps going up, up, up. And Spirit, they gotta be feeling good, good, good. Oh, absolutely. Right, like we were just kind of talking about, despite lifestealer being top of the net worth, look where the rest of his cores are. Look where this invoker is. Like, this is rough for night pulse and i don't know if they have a way back into this Team he Spirit has two... are just looking too far ahead dude the invoker has two items one of them is yeah. a shard and one of them is a spirit vessel with zero charges i don't count on midas because it's done nothing for him so far true right true. sure the emp is gonna pull you in oh cool cool okay I mean, that's kind of your only option, right? Because if you're able to burn away all of your Toro's mana, maybe there's an opportunity there. But even then, the Chen already working his way towards the Greaves, has that Arcane Boots in the back pocket. That Tiny has one as well, just in case of any sort of yeah. scary situation. So, at Night Pulse, the option's really starting to run out here. We did see the little Friends come into play there, but it's just a situation where you just don't have damage, man. Yeah. Yeah, Nightpals, they did something interesting in that fight where they were popping Lifestealer on the low ground. I mm -hmm. get it, he's the hero to break the smoke. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather have that be Tidehunter? Because, li like we just saw, a ward gets placed and he gets kidnapped and screwed. I keep thinking that Nightpals have this false idea that the Lifestealer will be able to rage in time. And that's just proven not to be the case. And sure. it might prove to be the case again here, where he's tossed up to the sky, held down, he rages this time, but he's already pulverized, and he just doesn't have an infest target. He'll run into Warwick, who's ghost walked up right now. This could be an opportunity for the side of Night Pulse. They have a Ravage, but they don't have the vision for now. Warwick just daring them to go on him. There's a Lifestealer in front. But yeah, we need to keep an eye out for this Ravage. He doesn't feel comfortable popping it for now, as this fight's a bit of a mess. It's trying to find a target Lao in the thick of it all held down by the dead in water and Kami starting to lay into the lash forcing the hand of God out as well as the toss back the supports on Team Spirit doing a great job at breaking this up but it's a huge avalanche onto three and in comes the Toro Chronosphere onto Warwick and you don't stand a chance Night Pulse they don't even have a chance to get the Ravage off and it was drawn out it looked decent 
Nice little infest plays, but again, Night Pulse, they just can't find any semblance of a team fight. If you are getting gone on as the life stealer first, I really genuinely don't see a chance that Night Pulse wins. The second the life stealer dies or is below like half a third HP, the fight's over. Unless life stealer can stand and and, and tank up against uh Ags. Primal Beast and a Faceless Void, and a Lash? there's no chance. Like, how do you, like, conceivably, how do you win these fights? Like, you need to get a big Ravage into big Blast-Offs, into yeah. Invoker I... finding damage out of his back pocket somewhere. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, he's gonna have to make like some sort of, uh, damage. yeah, he has to make some sort of, cut some sort of under-table deal with, with how lacking he is in terms of the wares right now. This is... A night Pulse, I mean, we talk about them being prepared and you can see the intention of the draft, right? The whole idea is yes. that Life Stealer gets aggressed upon, you break things up with a Ravage, you have enough space for the counter initiate, it's gonna be great. It just hasn't really worked out as Spirit, they're able to truck on ahead from a couple of really good early mid-game fights. Just that now, they, like we said, you give them, you give them a small advantage. You never yeah. see in the light of that advantage again. Now Collapse, might have stuck around a bit too long, dead in the water now. Shouldn't be able to onslaught out, but popping that BKB means that he should be able to just waddle his way out of here and just TP out to boot. Nothing to stop that. No bash out of any sort yet on the life stealer, but I actually want to get it going here. So, yeah. understanding that there's no BKB, maybe this is Night Pulse's second opportunity. And if you find someone immediately, now no one is in this like lower jungle area, but if you found someone immediately, you'd be able to take a fight without the Primal Beast Ooh. being there. Because you've got a good 45 seconds until he's oh, back. Oh, Vazia. It's really near some of the enemy heroes, but I'm not sure whether they know that Spirit are postured in this area. I mean, surely you get a bit of an inkling because you got to be setting up for this daytime Roach, Vazia. And Mira just miss each other, blinking away, both unsure about the reinforcements available to them. Vazia will just get tossed up and start to get laid into by Lao. Where's the rest of the Night Pulse gang? Vazia, are you lost, little tight hunter? You need to waddle your way back to safety. Straight in, another Chrono. It's just too easy for your Toro. He gets three. Kami just has the TP out. And he can't even make it there. Pulverize up. Team Spirit GG is called Night Pulse. He's get clocked out. You know, the things we're looking quite good for night pulse and maybe this is just one of those team spirit have more experience right at the end of the day they understood that collapse was going to get shafted in lane right and that's probably why they picked primal beast with life sailor being in the pool they recognize hey collapse you're going to get shafted but you're really good at recovering so you're going to